next macromolecule that we are going to be talking about are proteins. And proteins are pretty much considered one of the most important molecules in living organisms, right? Um, things that are made up of protein, pretty much, well, you think of, uh, I think of egg whites. Um, we uh, are talking about our fingernails, um, pretty much the within the tendons, in, in our bones, in our uh, ligaments, um, and pretty much, really, proteins are a macromolecule that are very important for us to be able to take in on a regular basis. So proteins, pretty much, um, they're pretty much considered an unbranched polymer of amino acids. And so we talked about this word polymer in um, when we were talking about um, polysaccharides. So polymer is really a long chain of different subunits. And what are these subunits? Well, the amino acids, right? These are the small molecules which are considered subunits to an actual protein. So the amino acid itself here is really the subunit, the smallest entity of all proteins. So the subunits of proteins. Now, um, there are 20 amino acids right, that um, are found in food. Of the 20, eight of them are considered essential. Let me just scroll down here. I've got this list uh, just to kind of show it to you guys. And we have here on the left, we've got what we call the essential amino acids. And the ones that are on the right are considered the non-essential amino acids. And, we, and I just wanna kind of bring your attention to the essential amino acids, right? These are very important. And, and, and they're important because the body cannot produce these amino acids on their own. So in other words, we need to take in these amino acids, whether it be somehow in our diets, in order to obtain these eight important essential amino acids. Now, another thing I wanna to bring to your attention are a couple of these amino acids that actually have the little star next to the asterisk. And these um, amino acids that have the asterisk are really important because these are actually um, essential amino acids for infants, right? Infants, unfortunately, cannot make these, um, these amino acids. Now, let's look at pretty much the, um, the arrangement of uh, an actual amino acid. And amino acids all start with some kind of a central carbon and that central carbon is going to be bonded with a hydrogen and pretty much this is what's going to distinguish between one amino acid and another amino acid and this is the the, the biggest distinction between them. and it's something called an r group all right now we're going to talk about the r group in just a second now let me just uh finish drawing out um, this amino acid. So we've got here um, our central carbon atom. On the left side, we have pretty much something called the amino group, right? So this is called the amino group of all amino acids, right? So it's the nitrogen uh, bonded to, uh, to hydrogen. On the right side, we actually have another carbon. However, it is double bonded to an oxygen and single bonded to an OH. And if you're able, if you, if you know your functional groups, you'll recognize that on this right side, we are gonna find what we call our carboxyl group. So all amino acids have the following components. They've got one carboxyl group on one side. Sorry for the mess. Uh, they've got an amino group 
on the other side with our central carbon and here at the bottom this so-called R group and we talk about 20 amino acids that are found in, in, in our foods um, and pretty much as we said there are eight essential what distinguishes all 20 of these amino acids is that actual R group so that R group could be a, a chain of carbons uh, that R group could be a you know a carbon hydrogen bond and maybe a, an OH right uh, like um, the amino acid serine um, possibly another R group could be uh, again a carbon with a, um, a benzyl group, right? Or we could say a phenyl group, should I say, um, where, and this pretty much gives it the name, it's the PH, uh, E, this is the phenyl alanine. And again, this R group is, com is completely different between all the 20 amino acids. However, when we, we already talked about amino acids being the subunits of proteins, which means we've got to put together a whole bunch of these subunits together to form this so-called polymer to ultimately form specific types of proteins, right? So now let's just scroll down a little further. And I have here just two uh, any two amino acids here and we didn't we, I just put in the R group and what I'm gonna do is actually I'm going to label this as R1 and R group 2 meaning that they are completely different amino acids so what's gonna happen here is the following what's gonna happen now and, and, and if you notice here again, and, and if you've been watching the, the, the video on the carbohydrates and on the lipids, and we, we, I ended up labeling your hydroxyl group or the OH and the H different from the rest of the compound. Because what happens is, and you can almost guess really what I'm going to say if you've watched the other videos is, yeah, we are actually going to remove molecule of water when we bond together two amino acids. So what will happen here is, let me just uh, erase, you know, the, the OH, right? And now notice here, there's a bond here, there's a bond here. So what's gonna happen? Well, that bond kind of connects with, and that bond connects here with this nitrogen. So now, right, we've got now the carbon or the carboxyl group loses the OH, right? So this is how the bonds always work in amino acids. You've got the carboxyl group, right? The carboxyl group on one amino acid bonds to the amino group, right? of its adjacent amino acid. So this bond that forms is something called a peptide bond. So this bond that forms between a carboxyl group and an amino group is called a peptide bond. So a peptide bond is the, the bond between amino acids in a protein molecule. So what's going to happen is we form now a bond between two amino acids. But again, we, we are going to string along a whole bunch of these different amino acids um, in a big long chain. So again, as we said, this reaction, we remove water. Uh, for those who remember, when you remove water, it's called a dehydration, right? dehydration reaction right however if we look at this really this bond that's formed this is a, uh, a a peptide bond and now if we put together a whole string of these and let me extend this right and let me simplify the amino acid so I'm gonna put one amino acid I'm gonna make it a red pyramid here and it's going to bond let's say with an amino acid that is circular and it's going to bond 
with um, maybe a rectangular uh, amino acid as such. It's going to bond now with, uh, let's say, something that is uh, triangular in shape. And this is just to distinguish one amino acid from the next and the next and the next, right? We, we can give them some names. Let's say this was leucine. Uh, let's say this was cysteine. Uh, let's say this was phenylalanine. Uh, let's say this one was serine. And so we've got a whole bunch of amino acids that are linked together by this bond, right? This bond, that, as I said, that it connects one amino acid from the next. And let's say there was another one and continued and it kept going and kept going, right? So let me just kind of put dot kind of thing saying it keeps going on, right? So you, with these right these these connections these bonds that are formed between one amino acid and the other is what we call a peptide bond however when you put together a small chain of a bunch of amino acids together you have yes this this uh, peptide bond but you have something called a polypeptide and again think of the word poly meaning many so many peptides or many peptide bonds meaning how can i have many peptides i can have many peptides because i have many amino acids that are chained together All right now uh proteins um now can actually get broken down right so remember we take in these proteins let's say in our food right we have a steak we have tuna uh we have fish uh we have beans so foods that are rich in proteins we take in these long chains and what happens in terms of digestion these peptide bonds get broken so all of a sudden we are able to deliver the body each individual amino acid to allow our body to form other proteins that we need okay and to put them together as we said we call this a dehydration reaction because we removed water but now to break the bonds right to break the bonds well why not oops sorry why not reintroduce water right so when you reintroduce water to the compound to break this compound this is what we call uh, a lysis right a lysis it means to break but it's not just a typical hot lysis it's called hydrolysis right hydrolysis so breaking down with water and the same thing goes with breaking down the um a, a big long chain of um uh, uh, of monomers of uh, carbohydrates now uh a few things to talk about in terms of uh Proteins, we talked about it a little bit at the beginning, uh, some important proteins, uh, but some other very important groups um, of proteins that I do want to address are things called enzymes. And we're going to talk about this in uh, a future lesson. Enzymes are really important because they help, as we're going to find out, speed up chemical reactions. Uh, another important um, uh, protein uh, I hope I said protein. Another important protein is collagen, right? And collagen is pretty much found in connective tissue of mammals. Uh, they're pretty much found pretty much in the bones, uh, in your tendons, right? In your cartilage. Could you, so you can almost see why proteins are important for the body. And lastly, another very important um, protein is insulin right you probably heard of insulin we're not going to talk too too much about it but insulin really is a hormone a chemical messenger pretty much that regulates uh pretty much our carbohydrate and fat metabolism right so it's in, in, important for metabolism in the body right and pretty much it helps to regulate the the breakdown of fats and carbohydrates